there! Do you know what it means when I say the season of Lent? No, it's not that I'm going to let you borrow things for a really long time. It's the season of our church year between Christmas or the time after Christmas and the time of Easter. Lent is when we are serious and we think about solemn things. We remember how Jesus suffered, how Jesus was willing to give up his life for us, for all that Jesus endured because of us. This is a time when we give thanks for the ways that Jesus loved us and that we think about Good Friday and how Jesus died on the cross for us. And we try and do our best to think about all of the ways that Jesus suffered. Can you think about some of the ways that Jesus suffered for you and for me? Can you think about ways that you could connect with that suffering? One of the ways that we do this in Lent is by giving up really good things that we like. You might have had pancakes earlier this week on Shrove Tuesday or Pancake Tuesday when we eat all the good things in the house because long ago people didn't eat good things during Lent. They gave something up to try and identify with Jesus and how he suffered. We're going to learn all sorts of things about Lent in the coming weeks, and we'll start with a few today. The Word of God Mark, Chapter 1, Verses 9 through 12 At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open, and God's Spirit, looking like a dove, came down on him. Along with the Spirit, a voice, You are my Son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. At once, this same Spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. For forty wilderness days and nights he was tested by Satan. Wild animals were his companions, and angels took care of him. Exploring the Word in the World. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today on this virtual faith track. We've learned today a little bit about what Lent is and why we call it Lent and how many days it lasts. And we heard a scripture reading about how Jesus had an amazing experience with God, how he went to the River Jordan and was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. And while he was still in the water, a dove, a bird, a voice descended on him and he was identified as God's child. And it was an amazing experience for him. But almost immediately, he was driven out into the wilderness. And while he was there, he encountered Satan, or who we call the devil. Can you imagine what that must have been like to have such an amazing experience with your cousin to be baptized and then 
have this voice, this presence from heaven identify you as being special, as being beloved of God. And then before you've even begun to process that, you're out in the wilderness and you meet Satan. That's something I think not too many of us would deal with very well. And yet we're told in our scripture, in the story from the Bible, that Jesus doesn't give in to temptation, that no matter what Satan tempts him with, he doesn't give in. Have you ever been tempted? Maybe it was to eat the last cookie that you knew you shouldn't have or to take something that your mom told you you weren't supposed to eat, to watch a television show that you know you're not allowed to watch, or perhaps to hit your brother or your sister when you know you're not supposed to, or stay up too late, or stay awake all night reading a book, or playing with people that you know you're not supposed to play with, or any of the million things that we're tempted with each day things that we know we're not supposed to do. And maybe not even big things. Maybe not big things like stealing things or lying about things, but just little things like not tidying up our room because we don't think that mom will notice or when we're told to tidy up our room and we want to play a video game or read a book, stuffing everything in the closet and hoping that everything will be okay. Even as adults, we're tempted by things Maybe it's not things like tidying up our room, but putting off things that we know are hard to do or sometimes spending money on things that we shouldn't. We're always tempted, whether we're kids or we're adults. And sometimes it's really hard to not give in to that temptation. And lots of times, adult or kid, we do. We eat the last cookie. We don't do what we should. We're mean to people when we know we should be kind. We give in. Sometimes you may have seen cartoons where there's a little angel on one shoulder and a devil on another shoulder. And it's like their little voices are encouraging us one way or the other. Be good, tidy your room, listen to your parents from the good angel. No, don't do that, don't tidy your room. Don't listen to your parents. They don't know what to tell you to do from the other one. And it's hard sometimes to listen to the right voice, the one that we know is right. So we have to do our best. But what happens when we're wrong? When we make the wrong choice, when we listen to the wrong voice, what happens next? Well, sometimes we have to deal with the consequences of the thing we did wrong. We may be in trouble. We may have to deal with that, whether we're grown up or whether we're not. We all have to deal with the consequences of our actions. But there's something else that we have to accept, that it's good to know that when we go wrong and we ask God to forgive us because we know we've done something wrong, God does. It doesn't mean that your parents might still not be angry with you or that you might be in trouble with your friends or that you might have to do something so that you make the situation right but we know that God forgives us for the mistake that we made and that if we ask God helps us to try better next time so that we don't make the same mistake twice and then we learn so as we talk about Lent and we talk about Jesus and everything that Jesus did Try and remember that Jesus was tempted in the desert. And because Jesus was able to say no and be strong, he gives us an example of how to be strong. But when we can't be strong like Jesus, we're forgiven. This is a good thing to know. I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Do you ever feel like sometimes there are two separate voices in your head the ones that suggest that you do good things and the ones that suggest that you be bad. Like it's a balancing act between trying to do what's right and avoiding what's doing wrong. That sometimes in your life you're called to make different choices. Sometimes the choice is for something good 
and other times the choice is for something that's right and they're not always the same. That sometimes temptation is just there and maybe you can decide to ignore it. But then other times something interesting catches your attention and maybe you know you shouldn't do it. It's bad behavior or something that'll get you into trouble, but it's right there and it looks so interesting. And what if you just did it just a little bit? Would you get in trouble? Would it be a problem? And then before you know it, you're going to be in big trouble. Sometimes we're tempted like that. But when we are, we have to remember that Jesus is with us, that he walks with us. And even if we do make mistakes and we are tempted and we listen to the wrong voice, we're forgiven when we ask for it. All we have to do is ask God to forgive us. And we know that God loves us and that it'll be okay. This is an amazing gift and we give thanks for it. We still try and do our best to do what's right, but when we can't, we know that God loves us anyway. What a great gift. Thank you.